Hello, all of you fellow type ones out there. This is Dr. Jody, and oh, these are my sunglasses, not my regular glasses here to help me see the screen better. There we go. <laughs> um, perhaps you're just finding me. If so, welcome. I've been doing this my 110th or so Facebook Live to help all of us uh, living with type 1 diabetes to live a happy and healthy life. I started back in March when the intensity of this new COVID world began, and I've been coming live since then. Like I said, this is my 110th. Facebook Live, bringing tips and inspiration and education to all of us living with type 1. My goal is to really have all of us feel like we are actually well-trained in how to get good blood sugar levels and have an A1C below 6.5. So I've had type 1 for 40 years. I've been walking in your shoes for 40 years. I've had the frustration, the loneliness, the highs, the lows, the fear, all of that. And so I have uh, created these videos and my whole business to help try to lessen that for you. So today's question is insulin on board. It's more than just your meal time and what your pump says. Okay, so insulin on board is what is generally left in your body after you do a bolus, right? So the pump will tell you insulin on board. But there's a lot of room left for I don't know, um, interpretation, if you will. First of all, insulin on board is not a static number. If you give yourself a bolus and then you're super active, your insulin on board will, well, your insulin dose from your bolus will not last as long, right? Because insulin on board is a pre-programmed function in your pump that tells you how much insulin is left after you bolus. And your pump only thinks of what is in the setting. Did you dose is it three hours, four hours, five hours? And for those of us on shots, because I'm on shots, it's just something we have to manually keep track of. Like how long ago did I do a shot, right? Because we all have in our mind, well, I think my shots last, what, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. The bigger your dose, the longer it lasts. But the problem with the pump is that it never changes that number. If you have it set to last three hours, it will always think your bolus will be in your system for three hours. Now, this doesn't mean it's peaking the whole time, right? Because a peak happens around an hour and then there's a tail. So this is the insulin board is how long does that tail last, right? Um, so my first point is that if you're really active, it might not last the full three hours if that's what you have set in your pump or four hours. It'll get through your system faster. It'll metabolize faster. Now, if you do your shot and go to sleep, then your insulin on board will be elongated, right? Because your metabolism is slower. So you have to always think, and this is what I teach all my patients that I work with. I work virtually with patients like you all the time. So if you want to think of that option, you can check out my website. But the insulin on board is not a static number, just like everything in diabetes. We have to use critical thinking to kind of, you know, tweak and dance and adjust Right. So my number one point is that insulin on board is not a static, even though your pump will tell you it is. But number two is anytime you have insulin in your body, i.e. your basal rate or your long acting insulin, you have insulin on board. OK, so the pump can say you have zero insulin on board, but it's only looking at your bolus. It's not considering that you do have insulin in your system. Right. And so this is the number one thing I work with when I start working with patients is, is your basal rate set correctly? Because somebody said to me the other day, I didn't have any insulin on board and I still went low. Because as you guys know, they've been following me. Insulin is what makes us go low. So if you have too much insulin in your system, you can go low. But yes, your long acting can also make you go low. Your basal rate can also go make you go low. And so that's something you really have to understand. Um, if you want to learn more about how to make sure your basal rate is set correctly, you can work with me or check out my course, How to Get Off the Blood Sugar Roller Coaster. So today's point is I want you to really think about insulin on board is not a static thing. Number one, it can be shorter time or more time. And number two, you have to consider your long acting and your basal because that can make you go low too. Okay, so Amy says, uh, are you on shots? Yes. Yes, we critically think. 
Excellent. We've got to use critical thinking with diabetes. <laughs> so please, if you need any help, if you're struggling, check out my website, drjodynd.com. I'm coming to you live Mondays and Wednesdays now, right around three o'clock Pacific, six o'clock Eastern. So I'll be back on Wednesday. So I will see you then. Sonia says, just wondering how many injections do you typically have per day? A bazillion. <laughs> I take one to cover my dawn phenomenon in the morning. I take maybe one or two for my breakfast, depending on how fast or slow it digests. I might take one at 11 if I need to correct. And then the whole process starts over again. I might want to pre-bolus a little bit and then give myself a little bit more during the meal, right? Mealtime dosing course covers that because the whole one shot per meal, it doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, but not always. So we have to kind of be dancers and move around on our feet if we want really good numbers. So thanks for watching today. Please, if you're struggling at all, you can reach out to help from me or my courses at drjodynd.com. Have a great day. Bye for now.